Well, good morning, everybody. I would say something smart like, wow, it's great to see everybody. But yeah, the good news is we are working on a hybrid classroom. So we do not want to abandon our go-to webinar style of classes because it has been wildly popular. We've had so many people join on our webinar simply because you don't have the travel time. You know, there are some of our members that take an hour, hour and a half to get to class. And plus, we also have members in the UP, on the west side, to the east side. We have members everywhere. So this really accommodates all of our members. And when you, you might have picked up on it that I said we have members in the UP. And what I would love to tell you, the good morning, Miss Lisa, is that the Upper Peninsula Association of Realtors, their information is now live in the database. Yay! So they are still working on onboarding. Colleen DeLang has been uh, teaching just about every single day, about two classes a day, getting them trained up on the new Paragon system. So that's very exciting. So if you want to start searching properties, in the go for it. Awesome. Morning, Miss Lisa. Thank you very much for teaching the Realist and BSNA class for us today. I know our members, our members are excited. Yes, it's kind of nice to be back on. Um, um, like I said, hopefully soon enough we'll be in a classroom. I can't wait. Yeah. So much better than doing this go-to webinar, but at least it makes it convenient for everyone right now. Yeah. Well, without further ado, I know you guys know Lisa Harris. I am 99% sure you've met her. <laughs> she's not only a realtor, but she's been a trainer with my real source for um, 13. Anything, something like that. Awesome, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my camera. I will be in the background answering questions if you guys have any. Actually, you know what? I have one poll to launch before we get started. It's a pop quiz. Are you guys ready for this? All right, do you know how much tax data we have? It's all readily available at your fingertips. 85% have voted and everybody has it correct. I'm gonna go ahead and close that poll share that results check that out yes we have the entire state of michigan bingo nice job guys absolutely mm -hmm. love it all right so i'm going to turn off my camera i will be here in the background and i hope you guys enjoy your class with lisa don't forget we will have this uploaded on youtube probably by tomorrow i'll just edit it and get it out there all right enjoy Sounds your class good. everybody enjoy Thanks, it lisa. thank you Okay, so let's uh, just a couple of things real quick. Um, on the right side of your screen, you should have your go-to webinar box. And if you look on, Debbie's been wonderful, and she went ahead and uploaded some PDF files for you. These are things we're going to be going over in Realist today. So if you want to download those later on, if you want to review them again, um, they're they're really nice. They're, they'll take you step by step. There's photos, and and it'll help you with the things that we're going through today. And if you have any questions, um, also in that box, you can go ahead and post a question or chat in there, and Debbie's gonna keep an eye on it, and I'll keep checking in to see if there's any questions along the way. So if anyone hasn't used Realist, Realist is a, uh, it's a tech site that we're using. It's a third party. It's pulling information directly from city records. The nice thing about Realist, and the difference between this and just going to, uh, for example, BSNA, it's pulling MLS records, and it's pulling your city records. So if it's a for sale by owner, you will find that property. So it, it, it's definitely very helpful, especially if you're having a hard time finding comps in a specific area, you can at least find those for sale by owners and that might help you too with your numbers. Okay, so we're gonna get started actually, there's a couple ways to go into Realist, but we're gonna start off in Paragon. So I'm gonna turn my camera off and share my screen with you. And we're gonna start off in there from a specific listing first, and then I'll show you other ways of getting in. So and let me do a clean screen, I'm gonna turn off my... Okay, so what we're going to do is start off from a list specific listing. Now, if you have a listing that you want to work on, we're going to run actually actually run comps in there. You're welcome to use that. I just pulled one of mine that, that sold last year, and I'm just going to use that one for my example. Uh, but what you'll do is go up in your Power Search button here at the very top. You've got your little box here. If you haven't used Power Search, this is a great tool. You can put in an MLS number. You can put in multiple MLS numbers. You can put in multiple addresses. You can put in an agent name, and it will find those properties for you. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my property address at the top that I'm using. And again, you're welcome. If there's specific property you need to run this on, you can do that as well. So mine's 21324. 
and it's John. And as you start typing it in, it should start pulling up a bunch of properties for you. If you're not sure when you're looking at this, which one you want, obviously the MLS numbers, the higher the number, that's the most recent. But you can also click where it says listing four, and that will allow you to choose from those whatever model listings. It, it pulls the first 10 for you. So I can actually open this up and then I can look at my sold dates if I'm not sure which one I want. And here's my most recent. I can open that one up and then have my full listing. So you wanna make sure your full listing is open so I can get you to your little shortcut to get you into Realist. So if you go ahead and open up that property, and again, my property address I used in case you didn't hear me is 21324 John, and it's in Macomb Township. And the MLS number on this one is the, it starts off with 500. Okay, so once you have it open, if you are looking at the legacy full agent report, you should see underneath your information on the top left of your screen, all these little shortcuts are little our skittles that we call them. And these shortcuts will take you into different areas on the listing itself. So whether I want to get some financial financial information on here, I can do that. It will take me to the history, disclosures. If you go over to the little red skittle, that is your realist button. That's what we're looking for. So look for the red one. Now, if you are on your agent detail with map, one of the larger views, usually these skittles are in the center area and just look for that little red icon. So as soon as you find that, we're gonna go ahead and select that. And what it's gonna do is pull the information that it has a realist about this property. Okay, so everyone should be on this page here once you open it up. So now it's gonna give you details about that specific property. So if you notice here, owner information at the top, And as you scroll down a little bit further, you've got your location information. I'm sorry, I keep moving. I have to move my little dialog box that you don't see here on the right so I can see my screen. As I scroll down a little bit further, here's the location information, tax information it has on the property. You can see it gives a legal description. It gives the recent taxes. Sometimes I do find, because this is a third party pulling information from your city um, sites, that sometimes they're, they're a little bit behind or sometimes they might be ahead. So I would check both. BSNA will take you directly to your city site and you can get the information from there. If you go down a little bit further, you have your ass assessments and tax information. It does go three years back. If you go down further from there, any characteristics it has about the property. Now, what I'd like you to notice, you have some of these have two um, things showing on them. So, for example, if I look at my uh, let's see if I got one with two on them. So the ones that say MLS means that's the information it's pulling from MLS records. But sometimes they'll say MLS and they'll show tax. So sometimes you will see different information. If you do, make sure you verify that. So I've seen where it'll say MLS records four bedrooms, then I'll say tax three. So that means tax records are only showing three. So did they add a bedroom that was not that city didn't know about, they didn't pull permits, whatever it might be. So watch for the MLS and tax information. So if you do see both, then there's something that's not the same. Um, so don't make sure you verify that information. You go down further, you have a cell score. So this one is rated as a high cell score at 736, which to me is a little odd because this property just closed. Um, we sold it, uh, let's see, our date of closing was last year. I know we closed at the end of the year. So, this one closed, um, actually we closed last year in May, so it was last summer. So if it sold last year, for me to think that this is gonna sell again really quick and has a high score, I'm not quite sure about that. Again, you know, I'm not sure what system they're using to, to come up with these numbers. Typically they look at the, the amount of mortgage amount due, how many years they've been in the property, and these people haven't even been there a year yet. So I'm kind of surprised it shows a high sell score, but it does give you the score to kind of give you ideas of properties that might have had the same owner for the last 20, 30 years. They have a low balance on their mortgage and so forth. Um, so if you go down further, listing information. So you can see the last time I had it listed, which is which we closed in May. You can see um, who the listing agent was, who the selling agent was. You go down further. Now you can see any market sales and sales history. So now it's gonna go further back for you. So before I sold it, who was the last person that sold the property? Who was the agent? Who are the owners? Um, you can see some of these, there was just a quick claim deed done here in 2014. It will show refinances. It will show a, a foreclosure, a sheriff sale. This can give you a lot of great information. Sometimes I find more on here than I do in BSNA records. If I go down further from here, here's all my mortgage history. So I can see when they refinanced. And if it was just a regular mortgage, if they did conventional, 
Again, this is where I'll show any foreclosure information, share of sale. So you can get a lot of information from here. It's great for your buyers if you're writing an offer. It's great when you're listing a property too. Okay, so if we go back to the top, I'm gonna to scroll back to the very top of my page. You're gonna notice in the top left of your page, you've got Launch Realist, which will take you into the site, which we're not gonna do at this point. Uh, comparables, which is what we'll be doing next, and then Neighborhood Profile. So let's go to Comparables. I'm gonna walk you through running comps in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Comparables. Okay, there it goes. This should just take a second. So what it's doing now is it's taking us from our information sheet about that listing specifically, and now it's pulling it right in, back into our Realist page, our main page, so we can run comps on it. And here you go. Okay, so this load, you're going to do property details, which is where we were just before we clicked on comparables. So this is the page we were before this. So if you need to go back for information on that property, you can select that tab. If you look to the right of comparables, we're going to walk through these next three tabs as well. Under there, it gives the property address. It gives the legal description. Um, if you look to the right, you have search criteria and a customized view. Search criteria is going to set up what it's using to search for your comparables. So if you notice, it's already set up some comparables here for me. I'm going to zoom into this little map here. So all these properties that pulled up around the house are the comparables it found. Now, when you set this off, and we're going to walk through this, is you're actually going to save your search criteria box. It has a default. You can make changes on it once we go into the next section. And at that point, you can save it as your default. So every time you click on comparables, it's going to pull those search criteria that you've put in there. And that's how you end up with these results right away. If you look at under here at the bottom, I've got my first 20 results here, and it automatically selects all 20 of them. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here just so you can see my page a little bit better. So if you notice at the bottom here also, as you're looking at these, these are just like a spreadsheet, just like your, your spreadsheet that we do in Paragon. Um, these can also be adjusted by columns. So if I want to set this up so it is uh, sorting by a different way than I have it right now, I can click on that column. So for example, if I want to see the ones that were the most recent recording date or the oldest, I can do it by that, by clicking on this, and it actually will move them in the order for you. So if I change it now, so now it gives me my newest ones first. The very first one is my, my property, and then it shows the comparables after that. And if you go through this and, and actually use your little scroll bar here over more, you're going to see you have all kinds of columns. These can actually be moved around as well, just like your spreadsheet can be. So, for example, if I don't want to have to scroll back and forth and I want to be able to see my sold price, and you can see on the right side of my screen, I can't even see it at this point. I can scroll over here and then I can take, and if you notice, there's two prices here. Sale price, which is tax records, and MLS sold price. And this is how you can tell if the property sold by owner or if it was in the MLS. So if you see just a sale price and there's no MLS sold price next to it, then it was only a for sale by owner and they're only showing in tax records. So if I want to take this, I can drag this over and I can move it over here by the reporting date. And now my sold price is over here on the right where I can see it right away. To select and deselect these, you're going to see here on the left side. And as you select or deselect them, you'll notice your map will change as well. Right now, because everything is selected, all my little numbers pop up in here. But if I want to remove something in here, for example, this house on course, which was only 370, if I uncheck that, it actually removes it from my map as well. And then on the right side here is just your statistics. It gives you a, a quick summary of what you have for your high, low, and median. Okay. So now if I'm running comps on this, I want to see the properties. If I'm not happy or I don't have enough, I want to adjust this. So let's start off there. If you look in the top right, corner where search criteria is, if you click on that box, it's going to be on the right side. And this is a search criteria that pulled up the comparables I'm viewing on my screen. So I can make adjustments at this point. And you can save it as a default too. So if you look at the top here, number of comparables, you can go up to 50. So if you'd like to see more results, go ahead and select whatever number you'd like. I have mine set up for 20. And you can change these at any time. You can change them specifically for a certain property you're working on, or you can always change them and make it a default again. Right under there is your sort method. When I'm looking at my comparables and my results, how do I want to see them? Well, the way I have it right now is the closest square footage to my listing is showing up first. I don't want them sorting that way, and I want it going from the distance of my listing, the most recent sale, 
the sale price, then I can select one of these instead. Okay, so right now I switched mine to the most recent when we're reviewing this, so I can just switch it in here as well. I wanna include my property images. Now here's the downfall with running a comp report in here, and I, I wish there was a way to change it, and maybe in the future they can. When I'm running my comparable report, I will give photos of my subject property, every photo they have, their interior, the exterior, whatever they have, especially if it was listed in the MLS, it pulls all those. All my comparables will only show the first photo. You only see the front view. So when I'm sitting with my clients, I don't have all those interior photos that I do when I'm in Paragon and I run a cloud CMA comp report and I can have all the photos in there as well. So I have to say that's probably the only con I found so far in Realist. That, I, that maybe again in the future they might be able to change, but everything else, like I said, it has a lot of information, which you'll see as we go through it. Do I wanna include a projected, um, the value projected by assessment? Do I wanna include the value projected by square footage? And do I wanna include that real AVM? Now the real AVM is an automated value model where it takes your tax records, your MLS records, and it comes up with uh, an approximate value for you. So if you don't wanna include any of these, you just, Click on the toggle here and move it to off. Under your real AVM, the data source. This is really important. Please make sure you leave both. If you want to see those for sale by owners, we need both. If you just select MLS records, you're going to miss all those tax records that did sell by owner and win. We have no record of it in the MLS. If you scroll down a little bit further, you have your, um, your pool of preferences. So for these, once you get specific on a property like pool and location, I keep these as no preference. I wanna keep it a little more broad as my default, but when I'm running my search here, you can see at the bottom I have submit. So if I make changes here and I hit submit, it's gonna keep those changes for this specific search I'm doing now. If I hit save and submit, now I've made it a default. So again, I'll make changes as I run just, and I do a submit on it just for a specific property, but pool, I always leave no preference. How far do I wanna go from the subject property? You can go up to 10 miles. Now, usually in the city, uh, you most people are staying within a mile area, even maybe smaller if you're doing like a condo complex, but um, it looks like we can go from one mile and then it goes up Then you've got your 0.25, a half and, and a three quarters. Again, these might be uh, better ones for your condo complex. And then you go up to 10. If you're more in a rural area and you need to pull more, more uh, comparables a little bit further out, then you can go ahead and adjust this. Now, if you're doing properties and you're more in rural areas, then you might want to adjust this as your default and make it five miles or four miles or three, whatever distance you want to go. Otherwise, keep it as your one and change it as you get into those properties specifically. Now, when it comes to sale price and I'm running comparables, I don't like putting a sale price amount in there. I want to first see what's, what it's pulling in that area. So usually I just leave this, I, I don't make any changes to it. I just leave it the way it is. Same thing with your build. If I am looking for properties in this area and I need newer and I know there's older as well, then for this search, I may change it to from 2000 minimum because my property is a little bit newer that I sold last year. Uh, but if you are running a search and it's all new construction in the area, then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to make an adjustment. Maximum will take you to today. So it'll take you through 2022. Bedrooms, again, if you're running this and you're gonna just save it for just a search, then you can put in whatever you need to right now. Uh, this house is uh, a little different because they customized this house and they made it a five bedroom, which in that area, they're typically four. So I found that if I do five for, for a minimum, I was really having a hard time finding comps. So I, I'm just gonna leave mine open for right now. Same thing with bathrooms and stories. Now. Bathrooms, again, you can do one, one and a half. This will show, or one or two. This is gonna show, if you put two bathrooms, it could be one full and one half bath. So this is gonna show a number of bathrooms, whether it's, it has a toilet or not. Stories, now this is a little tricky. So we have our split level ranches. They don't have a specific story for like a one and a half. So if you're looking for a split level, then you might have to go one to two. So it pulls in those split levels. Um, and that way you can avoid the three or four, which is going to be your quad and your tri-level. Uh, tax distress sale. Now, since we selected both tax and MLS records, this is already set up for us. It's going to include all tax sales. The boundaries, geographic boundaries. So if you have any changes on this, it will only show up if you are selecting like MLS records. Since we have both, again, this is already set it up for us for um, what our boundary lines are. It's going to pull everything it finds in both records. 
site influence? Is it waterfront? Is it by an airport? Is it by a canal? This will give you those specific options in here. Uh, Call the sec. I mean, there's a lot in here. Pond, whatever you're looking for, you can select those in here. And again, I would I wouldn't use that as a default. If you go down a little bit further, data type. Or, um, we've got recording date and sales date. So these are already going to pull by sales date for us because my sort method. I already went ahead and selected my sort method to be by the um, most recent sale. If you go down further than that. Now I can select how far back do I want to go. This will go six months back. If I want to go a year back, I can go a year back. And I am going to go one year back on this one. So we'll go 12 months. Uh, so date range. If I'm specific and say I, I'm pulling something from a few years back and I want to run those comps running from 2020 to 2021, I can go ahead and put a date range right in here. Okay, so again, um, living building area that's your square footage of your subject property what do you want to see as far as comps pull what do you want it not to use the square footage of your subject property and go around that the way i usually set mine up is the way appraisers do typically they'll go 20 percent above and below the square footage of the subject property sometimes more depending on what's out there for comps so you can make modifications what percentage above and below your subject property that you would like to see or you can be more specific and put them in exactly what the square footage is you're looking for. Go down a little bit further. Same thing with lot area. If you're dealing with, um, if they got acreage, maybe you knew um, they've got five or 10 acres and you wanna do um, a percentage difference or specifically go in, it goes by square feet, which I wish they would change this. I wish they would do an acreage, but if uh, you want, if you know what the square footage would be for that acres, you might, you might be able to just set them up in here as well. Sometimes a perfect percent of difference might be easier. Okay, and the last two things we have an option to do is what are we pulling, what type of properties? So you have two things here. You have land use and you have style. Now, just like in Paragon, you have the, the style, the structure style. Style will not pull everything. So you have to be very careful with the style down here. Typically, I don't use it at all, um, but I usually use my land use. So I'll put um, single family residence or same as subject. Gives you an option for a condo, a townhouse. Um, it gives you a co-op as well, cabin, and so forth. But this will pull all the properties for you. If you select condo down here in the bottom under style, you will get zero results. I found that it, it pulls nothing. So use your land use, not your style. So I, like I said, I usually just have single family residence, same as subject or both. And all you're doing is basically just check marking whatever it is you want in there, and it drops it in for you. If you have something in here you don't want, just click on that X and it removes that. Okay, so as we go down to the very bottom, you now have an option to cancel if you don't wanna make any changes to what we did in the search criteria and you wanna keep what you have for results. Remember, save and submit will make this a default. So if you don't want what we just did here as a default, don't select that, just select submit. And what it's gonna do is now search your new search criteria and drop in your new results for you, which you can see it just did here for me. Okay, and again, it automatically will select everything. So now we want to look at these properties and we want to see which ones do we want to use. You can see with mine, again, being that mine uh, was was a very custom built home. It had things in, in that area that some of the other homes do not have that price wise, there wasn't much in there for me to use as comparables. Across card, on the opposite side of card, there was more newer construction and, and some of those homes had those features, but a lot of the older homes did not. So. You're going to want to go through each one of these and the way I, I check them is I actually open these up and I go through and look at the photos. So if you look here to the left of the listing itself, you've got the number of listing it is and then you've got this little piece of paper which is going to give you that detail report, the property details like we did in the beginning. Then you've got the camera which actually pulls, if you click on it, it will pull the photos for that property. That shows you the, the photos of that property. There's an arrow and you actually can go through the swipe. The other way that I like to go is I actually just will open up. I will double click on the full listing and I open it all up. And the reason I do this is now it's gonna load all 20 right here at the top. So you can see I'm at four of 20. And I have an arrow here that I can go back and forth. So now I can go through each one. It will give me those detail report. I can check mark or uncheck them right from this page on the right side of my screen. So if I don't want to include it, just uncheck it. If you want to include it, just check mark it. 
and I can see my photos plus the details on the property. So if I click on the photo itself, it should open the additional photos for you. It should open the additional photos for you. It's not. This might be something they changed recently. I'll have to look at it. Let me pull on the other ones and find out. Wow. Because usually it should open now. If they don't have one, just um, like this one does, it, it doesn't show a photo at all, then you won't have an option to see anything else, obviously. But let me find one that has a prep view here. So they changed this. I used to be able to double click on a photo and it would open up that larger view. So I'm going to have to go back through um, after I look at these and see which ones I want to use. And then you can double click and see those photos. But I'm not sure why it's not allowing me to open that. And it might be something in mind. So hopefully um, you're able to open the photo right from here. And if you're not, I'm going to show you how to get back to it. So when you're done going through these, and because of, of time for right now, and there's a lot I need to go through, we're going to just keep, we'll uncheck and check from the next page. To get back to our spreadsheet in that one-line report, you're going to go to the top right of your screen. There's an X right here. Close that out and come back to this page. So the photos, and it always lets you open from here. Again, I'm not sure why they changed that. And the reason I like going from the full report is I can arrow instead of opening each one up individually and going to the next. So I prefer to go the other way. So I'll have to find out if uh, that's a new change or if there's something going on and then my, uh, could be my browser blocking it. So again, you would go through the photos. If it looks good, great, that one stays open. Then you go to the next one and so forth. Okay, so for now, I'm going to go through and just uncheck some of these because I have quite a bit. I'm not going to keep everything in here. So if you take a look at your report on the left side where you've got the numbers and the boxes, you're going to go ahead and uncheck whatever you don't want to use. So I'm going to go through here and just pull some of these ones that are a lower price. Actually, I'm going to sort them by price. So that way I can get rid of the ones that are really low. So those are my higher ones down further here and we'll get rid of all these because I know these aren't comparable to my listing. So again, if you notice as I'm doing this, my map should have less and less popping up on there. Looks like four, so a little bit more. Okay, so once you're done with removing or adding, um, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you what your report's gonna look like. That's gonna be the next step. If you look at the bottom of your screen, in the bottom right, you have generate report. And also in the left, you have print and email, which will print email this. But we're gonna look at the report first, and then from there, you can print and email it as well. Um, but actually, before we do that, I'm gonna to go through the other tab. So let's take you back to the top real quick here. And let's look at what your other options are. When we generate the report, you're gonna see all of these tabs in there as well. I'd like you to see that because you can add or remove them when you print and email these, because some of these you may not want. So back to the top, to the right of comparables is your market trends. This is gonna give you some graphs. Now, things to look at in here, um, some of these are gonna show you MLS records, some will show you tax. So if you look here, this is the median sale price and it'll have tax in parentheses. And it basically set it up between zip code, this, this uh, township and the county. And that's what these lines are. And these are kind of interactive as I touch them, they can see what the sale prices were. Again, these were what tax records show. Go down a little bit further, now you've got your MLS records. So anything that's sold in the MLS, you can see what the median sale price was. Down further, now you've got, again, MLS records, this is tax records for your price per square foot. And if you go down further, number of sellers by tax records, it gives you a change in sales activity by tax records. And this is, this is amazing. Um, these sales numbers back last year, April, May, and you can see the huge drop from then. So this is great to see. Number of sales by the MLS and change in sales activity by the MLS. Okay. So it, again, if you don't need this report, you don't want to include it. Once we get, after we generate the report, you can select or deselect what you want when you print or email these. Back to the top, you have to the right of market trends is neighbors. Um, this is interesting. This is actually, sometimes can be good information. It's going to pull the neighbors around your subject property and tell you what they paid for their property as far back as it goes. And you have an option too to change how many of these you see once we go into uh, our uh, an area where we can customize some of this information. So you can see here it pulled the properties around here. And if I scroll down a little bit further, you can see the, the properties. So this is my subject property and here's my first neighbor. Now, if you look, Sam over here at 342, um, 21342 John, 
last time there was a recorded sale on here was 2010 and his sale price was 20,500. So this is gonna, um, tells me uh, that was probably for his lot before he actually built on it. If you go to the right of that one, now neighbor number two here, and again, it gives you the owner name, recording date, document date, sale date, um, it gives you your SEV, property tax amount. I mean, there's a lot of information and characteristics about it. So if you go back to the top here, I want you to notice on neighbor two, like I was telling you earlier about the tax and MLS. So here, under your document date, it shows that the tax records show that it actually closed on September 5th, 2018, but it closed the MLS records for September 10th, 2018. Okay, so it's showing two different dates here for, for sales records for the document. Sale price was 470 and recording date uh, was September 6th. So if you go down further, now this one's telling me that it shows a full bath. Tax records only say they have one, MLS has three. So that tells me they've added another bath or they have bathrooms in the basement and the uh, city doesn't have that information. So this is really good to watch. Again, like I said, if you um, have any questions about it, definitely check your BSNA because that's going directly into, into your city websites. This is a third party that's pulling the information for us. Okay, so if I want to see the next one, if you go over here, there's an arrow, and I should be able to get over. Let's see if I've got all the arrows showing up. It looks like all of mine might have came up. Nope, there should be a few more. Zoom out a little bit. There it is. I was looking for this little arrow. So with your neighbors here, there should be an arrow, and that's going to load the next ones for you. So as far you know, as many as you need, so you can take a look. Now I can't choose certain ones of my neighbors, I can choose how many and it automatically pulls them for me, but I can't say, well, I want number 11 to show up and number three, but I don't want these other ones. So in my report, it's gonna be everything you see here, or you can remove the number of neighbors and say, I only want five, and it'll show you the five are on there. Um, but I can't be as specific as I am with my comparables where I can select which ones. Okay, so that is your neighbors. So if you go back to the top, let's go back over here to our tabs, our top left. To the right of neighbors is your neighborhood profile. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so with the neighborhood profile, it's gonna give you some more statistic information. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see my screen a little bit better. So this is gonna first start off with population. And again, some of this you may not be interested in or you don't feel it's, it's information your client needs. And some, it might be. So. Once we get to the part where you can print email, I'll show you how I can um, add or remove these. So under there, this is the age in the home. So you can see the age over here of um, people in the area, gender. Again, this might not be information you feel your client needs, but it's here. Um, so this will tell you how many male, how many female are in the area, how many are single, how many are divorced, widowed, separated, and so forth. Again, it might not be information that you want for them, but this is what some of the statistical information is pulling for us. Housing, it gives you the housing information, um, what the median age is of, of, yeah. Occupancy, this I do like. Um, occupancy will tell me how many are owner-occupied, how many are rented, how many are vacant. This is great if you've got someone that is an investor that's looking to get some rental properties in the area or someone that wants is an owner occupied and he doesn't want half the you know area to be rental properties. So this might be good information. If you do have an investor though, it does give you fair rent um, market values in that area too by county. Okay, go down a little bit further. Quality of life, workers by industry, workers by blue collar, white collar. Again, not sure how, uh, how important this information is for your client. Household income, same thing with that. But I do like, um, they've got community method, but I do like education. I think this is very helpful too. This shows them what is the highest level of attendance in that area for schools, college, and so forth, what kind of degrees they got. But a little bit further from there, this is, I feel, is, is really beneficial if they have kids. Here are the schools in the area. How far are they from the house? You know, what are the grades in that area? How many students? How many students per teacher? Which this is amazing. You usually don't see them that small anymore. Um, any ratings that they have, and this goes into um, school, I think it's schooldigger.com. Yes, that's what that is. And the community rating in there as well. Uh, local businesses, this might be helpful if you have someone um, relocating from out of state or on the other side of, uh, of the state from here. 
this will give them information on what's nearby. You'll be able to modify your education in your businesses when we go in to customize a few things. So you can select what you want to include in here. And that's it. So um, that gives you your neighborhood profile. And now we can actually view what we can remove and what we can add after we take a look at the full report. So let's generate our report. So I'm going to go back to my comparables. And in the back to the bottom right corner of your screen. So click comparables at the top, left tab. Go down to the bottom right where it says generate report. So now we can create that report, which might take a minute or so. Okay, so it should load like this. We're going to take a look at this because, again, this is what your clients are going to see. So you can take a look at their view. So as my client, the first thing you're going to see is the map with their property in the center here. The search criteria that we used. So these were anything specific that you selected as we went through that search criteria. A summary of the statistics. So it's going to give them their subject property and then their high, low, median, and average in that area. Go down a little bit further. Now they're going to see the column view here of their subject property and then all the comparables. And again, like I said, you can see those tax and MLS records as well, the difference in some of these. And then the arrows here on the right. So if you want to load the next one, you just keep going through them and you can see them all through here. So they're going to get this column view. It's going to be pretty, they're not going to actually be arrowing through, it'll be a PDF. So they'll have multiple pages showing this column view with all the information. Again, it's great because it does give you a lot of information here, but not having the additional photos for me is probably the only downfall that I see. Go down further from here. You're going to see the rest of your sales information, distance, square footage, and more characteristics as well. Okay. And if I go back into my market trends report. Then again, it's going to give you the same, the statistical information right here. And we can remove whatever you don't want. So if I don't want to show market trends, I can deselect it. Same thing with the neighbors. They're going to see the same view. They'll have that map and all the neighbors here and then the neighborhood profile as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my comparables and I'm gonna show you now how you can print or email these. So if you look now in the bottom right corner because I selected generate report, which is created here, I can now edit. So if I need to change something, I can go back and make changes. But if I look to the bottom left of my screen, I have a print and email. If you click on print, you have an option to do a quick print or customize. I always click customize because now I can select or deselect whatever I don't want. So if I want to print this and I want, obviously my crop comparables, I want the neighborhood profile, I want my neighbors. If I want to include all this, I can. You select proceed and this is going to create a PDF for you. It doesn't print right away, then you have to print it. So it takes a few minutes here. And it's just about done right now, PDF generating. Okay, so now this has been completed. I want to select print. It's not going to print yet. It should download a PDF for me. And then you're going to pull that PDF and actually print it from there. Okay, so that's how you customize that one. Now for email, if you go to email bottom left corner. You can customize your email and you can actually send the email directly from here. So if I go to my customized email and you want to send this to yourself to see what it looks like, Select email, customize, select or deselect whatever you want or don't want. And then you're going to go ahead and proceed. It's going to generate a link for you. It's going to go into the email itself. And once this is completed, which takes a minute or so here, I have quite a bit of comparables I selected, so I know it's a little bit bigger report. Okay. Once it's done, now I can do add to email. And there you go. So email window will pop up. It shows your email address. You're going to type in your client's email address. So again, if you want to send this to yourself to see what it looks like, type in your email address in there. You can CC it or, or blind copy to yourself as well. You can change the subject property. You can put, you know, uh, recent comps in your area. And then I have my contact information um, on here as well. I have a signature line down here. You can go ahead and type in whatever you'd like and hit save. 
or also later when we go in to go through our preferences, you can do it there as well and save it as, uh, as a default. You can type in whatever message you want and then go ahead and hit send, and that's going to email that out to your client. And actually, I'm gonna hit print one more time real quick because I had a pop-up blocker, so that's probably why it didn't show mine actually downloading. There it goes. And it should download right to your computer. So when you download it, depending if you're on Firefox, you should see it probably on the top of your download. Um, if you have Chrome, usually it's on the bottom left. I'm not sure if mine downloaded yet, so I'll have to check for that. Okay, so that is how you create your comparables. And again, all we did was we start off in Paragon. We went to our little Skittle, our little our color here, which is Realist, which is red. That took us into Realist, which took you into your property detail report. And then you selected comparables and then you modified those by your search criteria. Then you selected or deselected whatever you want. So if I go back to my edit report here, this is the view you had once you clicked on your comparables tab. Once you're done and you have everything in there you need, then you just generate report in the bottom right corner. And that's what creates your report for you. OK, is, is there any questions at this point? So I'm going to now show you a few other things. We're going to go directly into Realist instead of going from a property, because if I'm listing a home, you know, I'm not going to go from an old listing. I want to go directly into Realist itself, or I might find something that was never listed before. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to close this out completely, because I want to show you in Paragon how to get to Realist, just in case you haven't used that tab yet. If you are already in here and you want to stay here, you can. You're welcome to, but I'm going to close my tab out. I'm going to head over to Paragon, and in the top of your screen, um, you have a tax tab right at the very top here. When you click on tax, you have an option for your autofill, which is when you're doing your listings, but you have a real list just under it. If you want to go to the city site, BSNA online is where you want to go. So I'm going to go ahead and select realist tax search. Okay, so once this loads, this is your main page of realist. You can look at the top here. And I right now my view is switched to a list view. I'm gonna switch to what you're probably seeing, which is a split. If you are just seeing a map or you're just seeing a one-line report like this, in the top right of your screen, I have split, map, split. Because I wanna see my map, I wanna see my one-line report as well, and I want my search criteria box over here um, on the right side too as well. Okay. So we're going to start off in the top left of our screen here. The first thing you're going to see is multiple counties selected. We're going to go through this and, and select what counties that you would like to see. So you want to go to change county. You're allowed to select eight. And go ahead and go through these right now really quick and just select counties that you typically would work in, you know, that you may be searching. Um, as you check Marco, it drops them on the right side of your box here. If there's something in here on the right that you don't want to see, you just click on that X and it removes it for you. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to put in, do I have St. Clair in there? Yep, I do have St. Clair. But as you scroll, let's do Jackson. I'll drop Jackson in there. Now, if you don't have that county selected and you put a property address, you're not going to see any results. So make sure that's selected. So I've got my eight of eight. So once you have eight, you're maxed out. So if you have more than the eight that you like to search, you'll have to come in and change this when you're doing a search in one of those other counties. You're going to go ahead and select apply in the bottom right corner and that's gonna save that for you. Okay. Under there, you have two tabs. Quick search, my search. Quick, and it's just like Paragon. Quick search is just a quick search. There's a few search criteria boxes and that's it. I can't save this. I can't add additional boxes search by. It's very basic. So if I need to do something quick, I can just come in here. I always use the my search tab to the right of quick search. You click on my search, now I can add additional search criteria boxes. I have a lot to search by. And I can also save and I can customize my search as well. So let's take a look here. I have saved searches. If I look at this drop down menu, you can see some of the ones that I've run. So you can hit create new one to start here or you save it after you build in all the information. If you select customize search, that's going to give you all the criteria boxes you have options to search. There's a lot in here. So if you look in the left side of your screen, you have all these categories. Right now it has all selected, but I can go individually by sections and go in and select specific things I want. You're allowed 30 different search criteria boxes. So if you look at the right, this is what's already included. 
If there's something in here that you don't need as a search criteria box, you can remove it. Because again, it's just like Paragon. I can add different fields to search by, but when I pull my report, everything's there for me. So I'll be able to see all the results and all the information I need in that listing's details, but this is just for searching. So a couple things here that I do like to have, uh, let's see, under mortgage information. Um, if you put lender name and you are looking for foreclosures by Chase Bank, for example, if you have lender name in here, I can type in Chase Bank and it will pull up foreclosures for me or, or properties owned by Chase Bank. So I do find agents that might be searching for those foreclosures. Um, this is a great way to, to look for them. <laughs> right above that on the left, right above, I have a foreclosure and distress. So if I want distress sales, I can put those in. Uh, sales information, I, if you want to search by a sale price, if you want a sale type or a reporting date, um, you also have on the left, assessment and tax, this is also good. Um, I have some agents that want to find properties that are not owner occupied. Well, if they're not homestead, we know it's a vacant property, it could be a tenant. So if I want to select ones that are homestead or not homestead, that will tell me if they're, you know, if they're uh, vacant possibly or, owner, you know, if they're a tenant. Above that on the left, listing information, anything I might want to search. I find it's important to have your MLS, you know, your status, um, if you want to do by price, but obviously date is really important as well. And I do status date, so if I'm looking for actives or, or sold or expired, whatever it is, it'll give me all. If you want um, one for just sold dates, you can also do, you know, the sold price, sold date right here. Uh, you also have options to search by the listing agent as well, selling agent. And if you go to the left again, um, characteristics is like the fourth one down. So anything specific, I'm searching on a property here. Select those. Location-wise, the address you need, obviously a city, if you want to search a city, um, just a city, if you want to search a full address of a property, it's just by the street name, you can do that as well. So a subdivision, and then I always have owner last name on here, and owner name. So you can do a search by the name of an owner. So you might get a, a call, sometimes I'll get a, a call from someone um, asking about a property and then they tell me they own another property. Sometimes I'll, I'll get their full name and I'll search to see where their other property is that they may be listing or selling. All right, and then um, on the left again, the top one is all categories. So this, you'd have to scroll through all of them. So again, you just check, mark what you want. You can modify this anytime, 30 or the amount that you can have. And then once you've got everything in here, you can hit apply or save. If you save it, it's gonna keep this as a default. Apply just applies it for now. Okay, so that is how you customize this section. <clears throat> so now if you take a look here, now I can fill in whatever I'm looking for. So owner name, uh, property address, so we're going to search by that. If you go down further, I have all my characteristics I was searching by, and then statuses, so if I'm looking for MLS properties and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a property address under where it says address. So when you include the address, um, you're going to type in the full address in here. So you do want to include the city and state because sometimes the street might be located somewhere else and it's not going to pull the right location for you. So um, mine was 21324, so I'm going to type that in here again. John, comma, this one's my home, comma, just my. Once you have that in there, you're going to hit search at the bottom. And there's the property. So now it shows me the map up here and then my one line report underneath that. If I want to see that full, full detail report again, all I have to do is just double click and it'll open up that detail report. And from here, I can go through comparables again. So you can see here at the top, I can select comparables and I can run that through that again. But I'm not gonna go through since we've already gone through it. We're gonna go ahead and select back. So if you look here at the top left, I've got a back button, so I'm gonna select that. That's gonna take me back to the screen. Okay, so that's how you can run a search by putting any information here that you wanna search it without going directly from a listing. So now I wanna take you into the map. There's a lot of things you can do here on this map. And um, a couple things I want to do is I want to make my map bigger so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to clear what I have here on the, on the left first. I'm going to hit clear all so it's not showing any properties. And you can actually close this box out to make your map wider. So I'm going to go to the top here where it says change county. And there's a couple little arrows down here. If you can see them to the right of change county. If you click on that, that's going to actually open up your map larger. And it's going to close your box with your search criteria boxes. If you want to go back and there's a magnifier, 
and that will open that back up for you. Now, if you put items in here and you wanna run a search, you do need that search button here, so you will have to come back to that. But for now, just so you have a better view of my screen, I'm gonna close that out. Earlier, what I was showing you, when I first opened the section, I only had that default spreadsheet, like the line, the one line list at the bottom. Again, to the right side of your screen, you have an option for split, which is what we're viewing now, map, which gets rid of your list, or just list. So you can go back and forth and toggle through these. I'm gonna do just map for now, just so you can see what I'm drawing and doing on here and going through these tools. Okay, top left of your screen. So now that I have my map open larger, I have all these little tools here that we're gonna walk through. As you add these in, it's gonna add a lot of things and your map will start adding things and you'll see all these views of properties. To get rid of what you have on there, you have this clear all. So if you hit clear all, it's gonna remove whatever you've selected under these little tabs over here. To the right, you have a view of roadmap, you have a satellite view, you have your hybrid view, and you also have a train view. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my road um, map because I find that's the easiest to see what my results are and whatever I select. To the right of that, you have a plus and minus that's going to zoom in and zoom out. And you will notice as you go through these tabs and you select items, some of them you have to zoom in. Some you have to zoom out to see the results and it will tell you and uh, sometimes it actually just zooms in for you and you can see it from there. In the bottom right of my screen, you have a little guy here. This is your little Google guy. So you can take this guy here and I can go and take a walk on the street. Drop him in here. Okay, so you can see now I am on see if I see, uh, Shenandoah. It dropped me in the middle of the street. You have some little arrows here, so I can actually click on these and take a walk. As you're clicking on the arrows, if you look on the left side of your screen here in the top, it's showing me the address where I'm at approximately. If I wanna see that house, I can left click, hold my button down, and I can move this over so I can take a look at the house that I'm looking at right here. And then if I wanna keep walking, I can click on my arrow and take a look at these. And again, as I'm moving this, my addresses are changing here in the top left. So this is kind of a, a nice little feature. This is great for your clients when they're looking at items, and you can do this actually in Paragon. When you send them a listing, you send them something, make sure you include a map, because those maps will have your little Google guy in the bottom, usually typically bottom right corner, and all they're doing is dropping it on the map, and then they can take a walk and take a look at what's going on. So this is great without them having to do a drive-by, that they can actually go through these properties and just take a walk through. Um, you sometimes see those Google cars, I've seen them, where they're going around and they're actually taking, they're taking pictures of these properties and that's how these are showing up. When you get to a, another street, it actually, you can see my arrows now have given me three directions. So I can click this way and I go down park view or over here and move around, okay? So this is a, a, a great little feature. To go back, and let me see, I might have to zoom out really quick here so you can, I can find my arrow. There's an arrow back over here. Get out. There you go. There's a little arrow to the left. So where the address is, you click on that, it takes you back to your roadmap and removes your Google guy. So here's your Google guy back here. If you are pulling your Google guy and dropping them on the map somewhere and it's not showing anything or it's taking you somewhere completely different, then there's no photos of that area yet. So like I said, those Google cars, I see them all the time and they're they're taking some photos. So they're trying to get all of them in here, but um, so you'll be able to tell because as I move him, you can see anything in blue, I can see that street. So we're kind of an area right now that I don't have to worry about it. But if you go into your more rural areas, you go a little bit out, like St. Clair, sometimes I find they're not in there. Oops. Go back out of here. There's my arrow. Okay. Okay. So that is your little Google Guide. Again, he's in the bottom right corner if you need him. Let's start off with our tools in the top left here. So first thing you have is your pencil all the way to the left. So the pencil will let you draw on your map. So if I want to draw on here and run an area, it's, you've got three tools, radius, recta, uh, rectangle, and your polygon. It's just like Paragon, same three. So let's start off with your radius tool. If I click on this, you get this little plus sign. So you should show a little plus sign on your uh, cursor here. And you click in the center of the area. So here's John Drive. I'm going to click right in the middle here. And then I am going to move out my mouse. So as far as I want to go, it creates a circle. Click again, and that just created my shape. 
Now, once you have your shape here, you can actually modify. You've got this plus sign or this little circle in the center. Now, I got to double check, but as far as I know, this is the only one you can move around. But if you click on that, left click and hold it down, I can move this wherever I want to. The circles on the outside allows you to adjust the size of it. So if I want to make it smaller, I left click, drag it in. If I want to make it bigger, I can left click and drag it out. As I do this, this box opens up and it says, what is your shape name? I can name this. So if I'm running this area, maybe I have multiple areas I want to show them or multiple areas I want to search, I might want to name what they are so I know if I'm looking at multiple maps, maps on my page. It tells you what the shape area is, the radius, and what your total area of square miles is. If you want to get rid of it, there's a delete shape right underneath. If I want to search this right now, you could hit search right from here as well. I'm going to delete my shape. Okay, so let's go back to the top left of our screen and go back to our pencil. Let's now look at our rectangle tool. Go to your pencil, select rectangle tool. This one is going to be from corner to corner. So as I'm drawing like either a square or rectangle shape. So if I want where John Drive is over here and say I want to go over to Golden Gate and I click here and I'm going to move this up to Vesper. I'm going to move it all the way to here to the left and maybe a Shenandoah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to left click again. That's just created my shape. Um, this cannot be moved, only the circle, but I can resize it. So I can go on the outside here and I can move it out. I can drag it in so you can make whatever shape you need to. Now, if it's um, located in an area you don't want and you would need to move it to the other side of your map, then the easiest thing would be to delete the shape and then just redraw it, move your map and redraw it. And this map can be moved just by left clicking and dragging it back and forth. OK, so that is my rectangle shape. I'm going to delete that shape. Go back to the top left of my screen. And now I'm gonna hit my polygon tool. Now polygons, just like we have in Paragon, which is great, I can draw lines. So I can go around things. So if I wanna be specific and just get into just over here on John, I just want the houses on John Drive, maybe a Briar Point over here, and maybe I'll go down over by London Bridge. I just wanna draw really specific and then the ones in the center in Siena on Brooklyn Ridge and so forth. I can do that. So I'm gonna come in here. Here is where my house is end on John Drive. I'm going to left click. I'm going to take my, my line tool here and I'm going to move it. And we're going to stop over here by the Miller Drain. I'm going to go down to where I want to. So whatever you're clicking, you're actually going to relocate the direction of your line. And say we just decide, you know what, Rain Tree is probably this is as far as I want to go right now. So continue drawing and clicking. So now I'm going to move it further out than I wanted to here. And I'm going to go straight back up and click again to my start point. Your start point is your end point. So now I've created a shape. Once you've got your shape on here, you're going to actually adjust it by left clicking and dragging it out. I wanted to bring this back in. I can bring it back in. This can't be moved again. If you have to move it somewhere further on your map, it might, it's easier just to delete it and then redraw wherever you want to. But again, every time I clicked, I created that area where I can now adjust my map any way I want to. And then from here again, you can run a search and it's going to put the properties in there. Okay, so that is how you use your drawing tools over there and, and run a search. So I'm going to delete this shape and we're going to go back to the top left of our screen. Okay, so at the top left to the right of our drawing tool, you have these, it looks like little pieces of paper. These are your different boundaries. So go ahead and click on that. Right now, if you notice, my parcel is selected. I'm not sure if yours is, um, but I set mine up as a default. And what that means is if I look at these, I'm gonna zoom in and actually get closer to the house for you. As I look at these, my parcel, there's a line drawn where my parcel is. And what's nice about having this is that if I want to check on a property on here, and I don't know the address, but um, she tells me, you know what, it's about the fourth house off the end. So if I go over here and I go to the fourth house, it's right about here, I can left click on this. It's going to tell me the property address, the owner name, a couple things here, three bedroom, two bath, sale price, the last sale price, the last sale date. It says, oh, this is not the right one. All right, well, let's see. Is it one of these other ones? Let's take a look at this one. Now you can see again, here's another one because you have their information on last sale date. And here is my property right here. So if I need more information on this, if you look at the bottom here, first thing you have is this magnifier. And what this is going to do is actually zoom in a little bit more for you to see. 
your actual property right here. To the right of that, these rulers, which I love. This is great if you're, especially if it's an irregular shape. If you click on that, that's going to give you your dimensions of the property. So you can see here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. Mine is 71 by 145 and 72 at the back. So this is their actual property. Um, so this is really good. Again, vacant land, this is really ideal. And I've used this for vacant land listings too as well. Okay, so if I click it back in the box, now if I look to the right of the ruler, if you see like a little for sale sign, that takes you to the MLS listing of it, which it's not giving it to me. So it looks like my link's not working. So usually this will take you in and it will give you your actual last time it was listed. So I'll have to find out why that link didn't take it in. To the right of that, pictures. If I click on my camera, I should load all the photos and then you'll be able to go ahead and scroll through those photos. There it goes. And I've got my larger photo here, arrow to the right, and now I can go through all the photos. And also at the bottom, you can see them here. So if I didn't want to go through all the big photos, I can actually go through and say, oh, you know, I just want to see that basement. Do they, they have a pool? I can scroll through and find it. And then instead of going one by one, I can click on it at the bottom and it will load it at the top for me. So here's the basement photo. You know, so I can see the bar that they've got in the basement. Or if I want to see their pool, let's take a look and see what their pool looks like. Here we go. Now I've got aerial views of the pool. Okay. So that's a faster way just if you don't want to go through all that. I had 60 photos in here. So if you don't want to go through the way to do it. Okay, that X here at the top will close that out for you. If I want to see that full detail report again, it says right here, report. You can click on it from here, takes you to that full report like we did in the beginning, like we did from the link, like we did when we searched it. And I have all the information that I can hit comparables if I want to run comps on it. Okay, so that's how you can individually select them without putting in an address. You can just go ahead and click right into those parcels and it will open up information for you. All right, let's go back to the top left of our screen back to our boundary. So here's a couple things you can see. Um, one of the things that I do like seeing in here is that you can see your lines for specific schools. So uh, I've had clients where they've got a daughter, so she's about to graduate in a couple of years. They want to make sure that they find a house within that, that high school. Most areas are school of choice, not all, like you know, Troy, Gross Point. Um, so if you are specific and they want to be nearby this school, I can select high school here. And then I'm going to zoom out. Give it a second here because it's going to start showing my high school lines. I'm waiting to load. There should be a purple line for the high school. Once it loads, it will show you. Here it goes. You can see this purple lines coming in here on the right. Let me zoom out more. Like I was mentioned before, you have to zoom in and zoom out to see things. We can see for the high schools, they've got some uh, a pretty big area here. Okay, so. As I look at these, you can see here, for example, Henry Ford, um, Henry Ford's uh, two high school right here. So these are the specific lines for this high school. So all these homes within these lines, which is again, these lines are just so interesting to me because they they go up in here and sometimes they split streets. So your neighbor is going to one school, the, you know, the kids are going to a different one, which is very odd to me. But um, this is how you can see exactly the area. So what I've done in the past, and you can actually do this in Paragon as well, because you can see the, the school zones in there as well. You can actually draw over this and save that search or run that search, and I can see everything within that high school area. So this is an option for you to run you know, at any of the schools, high school, elementary school, middle school. So if I go back to the top here and I uncheck that and I just select school district, now I can see the districts right here. And there's your lines for your districts. So you can see where your New Haven, your Utica schools are, your Chippewa Valley, and, and so forth. Okay, so back to the top here on the boundaries again. I'm going to uncheck school. And then you can also see what your county is, city, neighborhood, zip, and so forth. Okay, to the right of boundaries, you've got this looks like a little, a little uh, key here. It's property and sales information. So go ahead and click on that. And you have uh, a couple options here. First thing is distressed properties. If I select distressed properties and say I want to see what is bank owned in this in a specific area, you click a check mark that. And if you look to the right, you've got to zoom in. So when you see those magnifiers pop up, that means you're either you need to zoom in or zoom out. So go ahead and click on that. It should take you. Oops, 
it's not zooming me in. So we're going to zoom in over here. Is, okay, there we go. When you're getting into some of these items where it's going to show the actual uh, little pegs for the houses, you have to be in closer. So I'm going to move this in a little bit more here and let's see if anything pops up. Now, the nice thing about when you're selecting things here for your map, as you move your map, it will continue loading whatever selection you have up here. So if I bank owned and I'm like, well, there's nothing really over here, I can drag this over and is there anything over here? And you can see one popped up on Vesper. There's a bank owned property. And if I click on this, it's going to give me the information. So this is actually looks like it went to um, LBN Investment and Loan LLC. Last sale price on is 2015. So let's see if it will let me load the listing. No, it's not letting me uh, load this. So I need to check with them to find out. Hopefully yours is working. It might be something on my browser going on. I know we're having some problems with some of the browsers with some things uh, the way they were loading. So I'll have to check into that. But it should take you to the MLS listing information, and I will check on that. And Debbie, if you're still there, if you can um, make a note of that too to find out why the link is not working, that would be great because I'm not quite sure why it's not taking me in. Is that the listing to create a transaction or is that? No, no, it shows you the actual listing. So if this was um, active or closed, it'll show me that MLS, it shows you like a PDF view of that last listing in there. So, okay, thank you. Um, no problem, thank you. And again, it gives you the information, it gives you your magnifier, so it zooms you in, there you go. And then property lines as well. It gives you all your property information. And since this is bank owned, and maybe I want to find out if, you know, if it's not listed or if it's going to be listed, and I want more information, I can click on report. And now this is gonna take me into my full detail report about this property. So I'll be able to see from here, as I scroll down further here, let's see, this one's in Portage. I go down to the bottom, because what I wanna see is wizard foreclosure, sheriff sale, what's going on with that. Here we go, okay. So the listing information just shows it's the last closed one, and I'm not seeing anything with it being listed currently. And you can see the last sales here. Here is my, so they did a refinance in 2017. And it doesn't give foreclosure yet. So I'm wondering if, um, if it is in sheriff sale or not. So what I would do at this point is go in BSNA and see if there's any information about that too, and see if there's more information about it. I'm gonna select back here, and I'm gonna go back to my map. There we go. So the report will give you more detailed information on a property. All right, I'm going to close this out, and we're going to go back up here to our property and sales information and go back to distressed properties. I'm going to uncheck my bank-owned one, and I'm going to go underneath distressed properties to sales and values. If I want to see tax sales, I can select tax sales, and I can go back for the last year. So if I want to see the last three months of tax sales, or let's go six months, and then I'm going to zoom out because, again, I'm really close into the street. So there isn't many properties in front of me. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more here and give it a second to drop some pegs on there for me. And so drag, whenever it has, you've selected something here, it shows you in the bottom here on the left. So it's a little red, little red peg here I'm looking for. As you can see, a lot are dropping in. And I can zoom in here. Now I can click on any one of these. Again, get all the information I need. So you will use the zoom and zoom in and zoom out quite a bit just to get closer to these houses. And here's the last one. Gives you a sale date, sale price, and all that information as well. Okay, back to the top to our property and sales. I'm going to uncheck my tax sales, and now I'm going to go to MLS sales. If I want to see what's active in the area, I can go ahead and select active. Let's give it a second here to see what loads. And hopefully there's something. Yeah, there's something. Again, with our low inventory, it's not very helpful right now for buyers. So one popped up. Let's see if we have anything else over here. Oh, there's a couple. We got a couple in this area, so that's a good thing. So as I click on these, then you can see your, let's zoom in, I'm so far, it's hard for me to select that specific property, so let's zoom in here. Close this out, there it is, there it is. Okay, so this one listed on, so it looks like, um, and here's the owner's information. So this is an MLS listing, so this is an active property. So you should be able to go to pull this property and see all the information about it. All right. So I'm going to close that out. <clears throat> if you go back to your property and sales again, I'm going to uncheck that. Pending expired sold as well. Okay, so let's go down to property characteristics. Now, this has a couple things will search for you. Um, your lot area, your legal 
your bed, bath, building area. But what I do like is owner names. So this is really interesting. So if you just moved in an area or you always forget your neighbor's names, this is a great way to find them. Um, when you go in here, you want to zoom in because it's it's going to be really small once these load. So every one of these parcels, a the last name is going to pop up. So I can see all my neighbor's last names if I wanted to go through them. There you go. And then again, you can always select these and you can see obviously more information about the, the property. And you get their full name from here. So if you're looking for someone, maybe you know them by last name, you don't know the first name and you wanna run a search on them, this is a, a way in that area, or you wanna see who owns what in this area, it's a great way to check it. And I think there was, I wanna zoom out for a second, I think there was a commercial property for sale as well when I was looking earlier back in here too, but it will pull what information is on, on, on a, uh, here you go, commercial. This is uh, Mulberg Family Real Estate. Not quite sure what this property is, but what it's about. That one's on 23 Mile. Let's see, this one's owned by an investment company. Here's another one by an investment company. So you can see commercial as well. Okay, so that is under our property and sales at the top here, characteristics. So I'm gonna uncheck my owner name because if I don't clear this, let's go back to the top here, let's clear all. If I don't or put none on here, then those are gonna keep popping up. And then when you're trying to do other things on the map, it sometimes it's a little harder to, to do. It gets a little more uh, frustrating when you have to keep looking at all the names popping up. Okay, so that is your property and sales. So let's go to the right of that. We're gonna look at some trends in here. So this is gonna actually color your map to show you different trends. So if I am looking for sales activity in the area, you select that. If you look at the bottom left here, it's going to tell me between 50 and 100 is green, between 100 and 150 is yellow. They've got quite a bit of sales over here. So let's zoom out a little bit here so I can see my map a little bit better as it colors this. Okay, so it looks like more south here of 22. They've had a, a huge number of sales. There you go. <laughs> so you can see I'm going to for you. So yeah, it gives you some great information here if you want to just see a quick view. Of, okay, well, maybe I want to farm an area. Is there an area that there isn't as many sales going on right now? Maybe I need to go and go after the, you know, these people. There's only 25 to 50 recent sales activity over in this zip code over here in Chesterfield. So it's got something, again, it depends on what you're looking for, what you're trying to do on here. So this is under your trends. And if you want to see number of homes in foreclosure in that area, a good one. You can go ahead and select that. And it looks like less than 25, which looks like most of the areas here is less than 25. So let's zoom out a little bit and see if it gives me anything more, which is great. I like to see that there isn't many foreclosures out there, but let's see if we've got anything coloring. Again, it's a changes as you move your map. Just look in the bottom left of your, you've got your like little key over here that tells you what the numbers are. Yeah, so I'm not seeing much. So it looks like most of them are like less than 25. Okay, so if I go back over to my trends and I'm going to put none on here. Um, aggregation level, if I want to search by zip code or neighborhood, if I want specific properties. So when you select foreclosures, if I only want to see single family or condo or both, you have to select those in here. This also makes your capacity. So, for example, if I go back to my sales activity and I want to be able to print this or send it to my client, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's really dark. It's hard to read behind it what the city is. I can make this lighter with my opacity scale by moving to the left. You can see it's a very light shading here, or if I want it really dark to stand out, I can go really dark. Okay. So those are your trends. So I am going to remove my sales activity and go back to none. Again, the easiest thing is just to hit clear all. They'll, that will remove that for you. And we're going to go to the right of our trends, which looks like binoculars. And this is points of interest. So if I want to see where the schools are in the area. My client wants to know, is there, um, where's the police department? Is it close nearby? Is there a hospital nearby? All you have to do is check mark those and you're gonna wanna zoom in and then give it a second to load. There we go. So as it loads, you will notice I have my little should have graduation caps for where there's schools. So there's a couple schools here right next to each other. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And if you click on them, I should give them information. So this is telling me, whoops, still trying to load here, sorry. 
Sometimes I click a little too fast. Let me zoom back out again so I can get back to that. Yeah, there we go. So as they touch these, it should tell them the school name. There it is. So this is a child care. I have, uh, I'm not quite sure where the little purse is supposed to be. That's interesting. Let's go over right here. Slideshow by Fran. So it looks like I got advertising for some businesses. Auctioneers over here. I'm trying to find my police department and I'm trying to find some hospitals so they can find any over here. Do I know there should be some? So here we go. So right here is the sheriff's substation right off the 23 mile. And let's see what's behind it. Here's a media center behind it. So again, this is just points of interest. Quick way to find things if they're, you're looking for, they want to be near something specific or want to know what's in that area. So, okay, so that is your binocular, which is your points of interest. I'm going to uncheck those or hit clear all, either one. I'm going to remove all that off of there. It's not moving. Okay, there we go. Let's clear all. What's this? Okay, so to the right of our binoculars, you got a little car. This is going to give you directions. So, they tell you that, you know, um, my job's at this address and I would like to be within that area, you know, within so far this, or can you give me directions to how far it would take, you know, how long it would take me to get here or there. You can put in directions from here, from start point to your end point, get directions. To the right of your car, you've got your map. When I am doing things on my map here, I can relocate this map really quick by just going to this little map here and I can type in a property address. I can type in a city, I can type in a zip code. It's gonna move my map. So if I want to go out to Rochester from here, I don't wanna be dragging back and forth to move those. It's gonna take priority to Rochester. So I can go Rochester Hills, select that. And now it's just relocated my map to Rochester Hills area. So if you need to do things on your map and you need to re relocate it from where it's at, this is how you do it. Just go to this like little map view here and type in what whether address, zip code, city, whatever you need to do. To the right of there, you got this little ruler. And this allows you to measure. So this is a measurement tool. So for example, if I need to measure how far something is distance wise to a property that I found, I can do that. So say we're down here at this property and I go to my measurement tool, I can click on here, and go over, oops, trying to get this to work here. Okay, too many things selecting here. Let's try this again. It draws an actual line for you. Selected, right? Nope. Try this again. Should, oh, there we go. I must be moving it too far, too fast. And that will give you an actual little measurement tool here and let's see if you'll give me my it's not giving me my exact measurements but it's supposed to give you a measurement tool and it's supposed to tell you there it is that's what i was looking for how far that is so it shows you how many feet again i'm not sure if it's something you will use but it gives you an option for that okay and then you've got this little balloon here. I can put like little balloons on my page, like they're called annotation tools. So if I'm sending this map to my client, I could do an annotation tool. Oops, come on. I'm gonna draw. There it goes. And I can type in here whatever little message. So maybe I have things on my map I've highlighted for them. I can type in here whatever that is. So when they look at the map, they can see exactly what it is I'm trying to show them. So that's what the annotation tools are. Okay, so I'm going to clear all. So right now we've got everything done here. So I have gone through these tools. I'm going to show you some other things, but I want to see if there's any questions at this point or something you want me to show you again. How are we doing, Deb? Uh, Deb, do we have any, I wasn't sure if you heard me, do we have any questions or anything? No, ma'am. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so let's keep going. So next thing we're gonna do, I'm going to show you how to draw on your map and you can do labels on here, which to me is very, very helpful. Um, if you just uh, um, sold a house and you wanna send out just sold flyers or invitations, um, you're having an open house to a property, you want people in the area, whatever it might be, if you wanna farm an area, this is a great way to do labels and they're free and you can run whatever area you want. So. I'm gonna just stay where I'm at right here. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit and we'll go like in Rochester. So you're gonna to wanna to zoom in and kind of get the streets 
in your view. And what we're going to do is actually draw on here. So we're going to open up our other boxes so you can see the results. So I'm going to go ahead and change my view right now from map back to split so I can see what it's pulling up. So you go to the top right of your screen, select split. So now I've got my, my one line report down here is where they're going to pop up once I have my results. Once I draw in here, I want to see those results. So I'm going to go to the left side of my screen and click on that magnifier again to pull up my search bar, which is right here. So again, that, that little arrow here will open this up for you. And to the right here, split will give you your list view as well. And then you're going to draw. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of my tools here. Okay. So we're going to go up to my pencil. I'm just going to use a, the rectangle tool. And you're going to draw, left click, drag it however far you want to go. So we'll pull these houses over here. So you can see I've got an area here. And then I can just run a search. So if I hit search, once I have got my map on there, it's now going to pull everything within that map. And you can see it pulled quite a few. So from here, I can now see what the view is down here of these. I'm going to change the view. If you look here, it's giving me a column view. I don't want to see that. But to the right here, I should be able to get my uh, one line report, my spreadsheet. So if you go to the right, if you've got those boxes, just click on one of those like three lines. It will give you your one line report here. So if you look, I have got businesses in here, which I don't want to include, obviously. So all you would do if it's there's a business, you would just uncheck them. And that way those are not being included in your mailer. Unless you want to keep them, you can. It automatically selects. Right now I have 93 properties that came up within this map. If you find there's too many or not enough, you can zoom back in here. It can now adjust the size of this one. And let's move it in a little bit more so I'm more into the residential homes. And then that's going to run my search again. So now I should have less. So now I'm down to 72. If you look on these, these one line reports, you're gonna have little balloons that pop up. If you see a yellow that's pending, a red is sold, a green is currently active. If it's currently active, you don't wanna be sending out to that to that person. So you might wanna uncheck them. Um, if it's red, you can see that it's sold. If you look and see when it's sold, then you can you know decide if you wanna include it. Some of these since, I mean, last time they sold was 2016, so I would definitely include my flyers to them. If they just if they just sold in the last few weeks, in the last month or so, you may not want to include them. But again, it's up to you. Anything you don't want, again, you would uncheck it. Once you have your results and you're ready to go with us, at the bottom of your screen, right below here, you're going to see you have an option to export them, which you can actually make an export to a CVS file, for example, or you can send them to Excel. You can print, you can email, but we want labels. You get to do 5,000 labels a month. In here there's no charge for it so if i click on labels it's going to ask you what kind of labels are you going to use so typically the avery 5160 is your basic 30 30 labels um, those are basically your address label size that most people use it doesn't have to be an avery 56 5160 as long as you have one that's similar to that it should print fine on there but just do a test print of one and make sure that they line up with the columns correctly and then you've got your larger ones which is your 5161 and your 5162 and then under there, um, use mixed case, which means it will use capital and lowercase letters. You want all capital letters. Address type, do you want tax billing addresses or property? Now, if it's a rental property and there's a tenant and you hit it to, if you send it to the property address, then that tenant's gonna throw in the garbage because again, they're, it's, you know, it's a rental. If you do tax billing address, wherever the owner is, that's the address that's gonna pop up on your label. If you want to show a current owner, if you need to include a foreign address, eliminate duplicate um, or create your own custom label, you have those options as well. <clears throat> you go down further um, and then it'll say, I'll use all remaining to export or a specific range. So how many of them do you want? I just keep them all. Once you hit create, it's going to deduct the 72 from your 5,000 love that month now. I don't know many people that send out 5,000 mailers. If you do, that's amazing. Um, but typically you won't go over that but again this is a free service to you you don't have to pay for this you don't have to pay for labels or addresses this it's this easy you're selecting the properties selecting what you want on your label and hitting create and this is going to create them for you and then you can just it's a pdf and then you just print them so this is a great feature so this is great for just solds if you're trying to farm an area whatever it might be 
uh, the labels are, are a great thing. And a lot of times I will export them and that'll create what my, what a list of what I've sent to so far, because then I can keep track of them. If you get things sent back to you um, for incorrect address or you get a call from any of them, you actually have a list of what you've done. If you want to continue maybe farming them, maybe every, you know, every three months, it's a good list to have because then you can keep track of what you sent them and when you send it. Okay, so that is how you do labels. It's really simple. So again, all you have to do is just draw your map in here. If there's any specific characteristics that you need, you can. Um, but again, once you have them selected, you can go down to labels right here and select the steps there and create your labels. So it's that simple. So that is how you do your labels. Okay, so I think I have gone through everything in here other than getting into your preferences. So if there's any questions, I can answer them at this point or something you want me to show you again. I went too fast through it or you'd like to see it again or something I didn't show you. This is the time I can do that before we get into setting up some preferences. So if you want to send a question in, you want to chat, you want to put your hand up, we can unmute you. And, is there, uh, and don't forget your PDFs are uploaded on the right side of your screen under handouts. So please make sure you download those uh, PDFs. Those will help you. If you, need, if you need them later or you need others, those are all in Paragon under MLS documents, and I'll show you at the end uh, where to find those as well. So are we uh, still pretty good, Debbie? Oh, looks like somebody is sending a message right now, oh, maybe. There we go, Ed Brittingham. Hello, Ed. Great detail in the info you have shared so far. Thank you so much, Ed. I'm, I'm hopefully this is helpful. I know there's a lot in here, and once you start playing with this and use that, it's, it's very easy to find everything, but there's a lot of information. It's free to us, so take advantage of it. Are we pretty good? Well, if everyone is comfortable with what we've gone through so far and you don't need me to show you anything again, and, and I'll ask one more time at the end once we finish, let's set up your preferences and let's customize it for you. So that way everything is set up once you get in here and, and we go through things. So, so we're gonna go to the top right of your screen. You've got like a little gear, the very top right, it should have your name and then there's a gear. So go ahead and click on that gear for me. And I'm going to walk you through every section here so we can set them up right now for you. So first thing um, on the left here, we're going to be under search. And here are your search options. First thing is, when you run a search, if there's only one uh, property that matches your search, do you want to automatically open up to that full detail report? Or do you want the one-line report where you double-click on it and it opens it up for you at that point? I like to see my one-line report first because sometimes it may not be what I want. Uh, but if you want to open up that full report right away, you can just check mark this first box. When you are doing mailing labels, um, if you want to see the mailing labels that are not on the or there are on the do not mail list, so that means if they are not if they're on the do not mail list, and I click on labels and I want to see them, even if they're on a do not mail, then you check mark this. If you want them to just be hidden so that way you're not sending them to them and there's no problems, then you could just leave that unchecked. For sales transactions, when you're running comparables, do I want to include properties that are not matching the criteria I put in? I don't like to. I like I want to see what's in my criteria because if if it pulls up something that's not, then I don't know if I'm if I'm getting good matches or not. I want to see what I have in there and then I can adjust my criteria from there. But again, if you want to, you can. You just check mark in how far back you want to go. How many properties do I want to view in a res, um, results grid? So that list view that we see at the bottom. How many would you like to view in there when you're running a search? You can actually view up to 3,000, but you have to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So it, it's, it does take a while to get through them and it takes a little bit to load each time as you're scrolling through it, but you can have up to 3,000 properties show up. Okay, so we're gonna go to the top left of our screen again where it says reports underneath search. Go ahead and click on your reports next. And let's set up some preferences for our reports. So first thing is our display format. You have an option to do fixed. And dynamic. So fixed will show everything on the report. So for example, if I am pulling up a report and there is no information for how many bedrooms, then it will show, it will say uh, bedrooms and it won't show anything there. If I want dynamic, where dynamic will actually will only show items that have results in it. So for example, if the bedrooms are not showing any information from tax records and it's empty, I won't even see the word bedrooms on there. It, it hides them. So it only shows things that have that can fill in for your search criteria. I prefer to have it all in there so I can see what's missing and what information they have and what information I have to go look for. So I just keep mine on fixed. How many 
properties do you want to see when you're running the comparables? Do you want to see 20, 30, 40, up to 50? So you can change that. This is, again, we're doing defaults right now. So whatever you save in here will stay the same way, and then you can make changes as you're doing your searches. So just go ahead and click on that drop-down menu, select how many you would like. Under the comparables, you have your sort method. So when I do see my results, how do I want this sorted? What do I want to see at the top? Do I want it by the closest to square footage? Do I want it by the distance, the sales recording date, the most recent, or the sale price? So if you want to see your most recent sales first, select that. And then property images, we definitely want to include. So that will give you any photos you can find for the properties. Projected by assessment, if you want to include that, you can. If you want to include a projected by square footage, do you want that real AVM, your automated value? If you want your automated value, keep that in. Again, any of these you don't like, you can turn these off. Scroll down a little bit first further here. Data source, please make sure this stays on both. Because the whole idea with getting into real list is you have that option to see those for sale by owners. If I didn't, then I could just stay in Paragon, run my searches for MLS data, and run my cloud CMA reports. But this is giving you those tax records, which I feel is, is very beneficial. Uh, pool, I keep as no preference. Uh, what is your default for how far your subject property is from the comparables? I usually keep this at one mile and change it as I need to. And then the rest of these are pretty specific on the property. So I just keep, keep them, I leave them open and then I adjust them as I need to. Um, if you go down further, uh, since you've selected both sales, you don't have to worry about these two, your debt, tax, distress sales, or your boundary. Your site influence, I keep it no preference again. I don't do waterfront properties all the time. So if I'm doing one, I'll adjust the property. Do I my, my date type? It's going to show up under sales date, not the recording date, because I'm getting both records. Search time period, what is my default? So let's say I want my default to be 12 months, and you can go back as far as 12. So you can change that. And then again, you can use date range to go back five years, 10 years, whatever you need to. The building square footage, do you want any specific run when you're running your comps? Do you want it to pull a certain percentage above and below the property, uh, subject property, or do you want to just leave it open? It's up to you. Again, I try to go with what appraisers do, and they may go less, they may go higher, depending on what's out there, but I usually go 20%. Same thing with the lot area. So again, I leave mine open. I don't do a lot of acreage. I, do, I sell more in subdivisions. So for me, I don't need to set that up yet. Land use, this you want to set up. So we want to make sure that you have at least same as subject in there. If you mainly do single family, you can put single family. If you mainly do condos, you can do that. Or you can just leave same as subject, and then you can add these in each time but it's important that you have your land use in there and skip your style. Okay, so that is our reports. So we're gonna go down further. We're gonna get, uh, I'm gonna go back up here and see if we got all this. Okay, so let's go back down a little bit further. Let's go to our neighbor's report. So remember we had the separate tabs as we went through them. The second tab after the comparable report was our neighbors. So how many neighbors do you wanna see in the results? You can go up to 30. So if you want to go further, you can go 30. If you want smaller and you want the closest to the subject property, then just do you know the first 10 around there. So, and that'll show up in your in your report. How far do you want them to go out from the subject property? You can go as little as a tenth of a mile, you can go a quarter mile, half mile, you know, 0.75. So it will take it out as far as you want it to go, but it, it will cap out at the number of neighbors that you have selected. What about your boundary? So I like to keep mine same subdivision. Because if I'm doing it, you know, in the areas down here, it's easy just to do the same subdivision and I should pull all my neighbors around me. If I'm out in St. Clair or I'm in the area where I've got acreage, then I may want to stay within the same zip code because that way I can pull the neighbor down the street that's, you know, that's actually not really down the street, it's a mile away. So depending on what you work with on a regular basis, that's how you might want to select that. And of course, I want to include my property images. Okay, so that's your neighbor's report. The next one was our neighborhood profile report. And this is where it will ask you for just a couple of things, your schools and your businesses. So schools, how far do you want to see that are around the subject property? So I can go up to 10 miles away. So if you want to go further, I think mine is set at two. So yeah, if I want to go five miles away. What type of schools do I want to see? Do I see public, private, or both? I want to see both. Which ones do you want to include? So on the right here, this is what's included. On the left, 
their check mark the ones that are included. If I don't want them included, I can uncheck them. So if I don't want to show them vocational schools in the area, they may not be concerned about that. I can remove that. Maybe they don't need adult education. I can remove that. You know, so it will remove it on the right here. And when you see those reports, that's going to be your default. Same thing for business. If I want to adjust my businesses down here, let's scroll down a little further here. So how far do I want the businesses to be from my subject property? So I can go a few miles away. How many do I want to see per category? So I have 10 max, but you can go up to 25. And what do I want to show them? So do I want to show them uh, farms in the area? If I'm out here, there's not going to be many in the area. Do I want to show them, um, let's see, healthcare, obviously hospitals, if you like to see that, restaurants in the area, it's kind of good to do, you know, if they're moving here from somewhere else, hospitality, you know, maybe I don't want that. So whatever changes you want to make, you want to make it here. Just uncheck them, we'll move them back here, or uncheck them from here, or add them in, whatever you'd like. Okay, so those are all our reports. This is the only things that we can modify in here. We're going to go to the left and we're going to do our email signature. So this is where you can send an email with that report to your client, which I'm going to actually open mine in a minute to see if I email it to myself. And when you do, it's going to give your contact information so you don't have to type it every time. So what you want to do is put in your name, realtor, you know, real living, whatever email address, phone number, anything you want to include in here. You can change the font. You can change the size, you can make it bold, you can change the color as well. So if you want to, we'll give everyone a couple minutes here, go ahead and type that in, and we'll go ahead and get those saved for you so you can use those every time. Hey, Lisa, I do have a, a yes. remark. Uh -huh. Yasna mentioned, she said that she is not able to set the date type. It's set on recording date. Yes, because she has both set. So if she selected tax and MLS records, it's going to pull up recording date because you're getting your MLS records and your tax. Yes. There's a couple of those that once you select both for tax and MLS, it already presets it for you. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So hopefully everyone is have your, and again, you can come back in here. It's just this gear here at the top and you can make any modifications you want to. Um, as you go to, so you can change this later on. Uh, I did have people ask if they can drop in like their logos or a photo or any of that. There isn't a way in here to, to add those in yet. I have not found a way to do that yet at this point, but that might be something they change in the future. But the idea of this is when you hit that email button to send that report to your client, they have your contact information. I don't have to sit here and type it every single time. So just a fast way to, to set that up for you. Okay. So the only thing left we have on here before we save everything we did, because there's quite a bit of stuff that we just did in here, under email signature on the left where it says map, this is where your parcel. If you want to see your parcels every time you go in here. So when you open up that map, it automatically has those little gray lines that actually breaks down all your parcels, which I like to keep mine on. Um, turn that on from here and that'll save as a default. So you will see those parcel lines. They're very light lines. You can't really see them much, but I like it when I open my map, I can quickly go in and just click in a parcel right away to find what I need to if I, if I don't have an address. I need to search it by the map, so. Okay, so that is all our preferences here all set up. So at this point now we can save this. So if you look in the bottom right corner of your screen, and again, if you didn't get through everything, you can come back after we're done and, and go back through it as well. But save changes in the bottom right corner. Please make sure you hit this now and everything you just did will save as a default. So when you come back in here, it should be set up this way for you. And again, you change it whenever you'd like, just hit that gear and you can walk through any one of these sections and uh, that will set up for you. So I think we have gone through, I think if there's anything else in here, um, there's a little question mark in the top right corner that's like a little help. Again, you've got your PDFs under handouts that Debbie was great and she put those in for you. Um, the star here is my save properties. And let's see, I think that's it. That is all we have in here. There really isn't much else. I know there's, there's quite a bit. So when you're sitting around watching TV, just play with us, pull those PDFs, those handouts, if you need help to find things again. But it's, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna close this out real quick. Just go back to my page, just to see if there's anything else. Um, I'm gonna do this. Real quick. Okay. So I'm back to my page here. So this is your main page again. Um, if there's any questions at this point, um, we still have a few minutes. I am happy to show you anything you'd like to see again. 
or maybe there's something you want to do in here and you're not sure how to do it. So I am happy to show you that as well. So uh, if there's anything right now, you can go ahead again and send us a message in, in the chat. You can put your hand up and we will unmute you as well. Um, it looks like we have, <clears throat> Deb, did you get the question? Or did Anna ask a question? Do we already answer that one? Or no, I'm um, sorry, Jess. Yeah, Jess, no, I got hers. Yes, no, sorry, Jess. No. <laughs> sorry. My, uh, I'm zoomed out and glasses aren't the best, so I can't really see anything. So um, I don't see any others at this point. Do you have anything in the chat or questions at all? I missed? Nope. That was it. It is being recorded, so I will get this out on YouTube probably by the morning. Perfect. If you need more handouts in Paragon, Debbie's been great. She's been updating these and uploading them for us. So if you go back to Paragon on your, on your page here on very top, there's MLS documents. Select MLS documents. You're going to go down to the MLS folder, and there is a folder called education. She has 81 PDFs in here. And what's great is they're broken down by section. So we're not going to give you one PDF for everything in Paragon. So if I need help with just, for example, home stamp, which is right on top here, I can hit home stamp, hit enter, and it's going to pull everything that's home stamp for you that we have uh, handout for you. And they're step-by-step -step guides. And if you click on them, it just saves a PDF for you. And the only other thing I have, actually, I'm going to go in my email really quick and just open up that PDF since it was giving me a problem opening up in real list. Hopefully you were able to open it. But if you email this to your client, I just want to show you what the email looks like so they know where it's coming from. So here's the email. It shows it's from Realist, the Realist report. It says it was emailed from me. It shows my name on there so they know it's coming from you in the subject line. When they click on it, it tells them it was emailed by so-and-so. Here's the property located. It gives them a PDF, which it did not create. That make, can you make a note of that too? Because it did not send my... Um, I didn't send my PDF in here. So you should have, and again, it might be something in my browser that's causing this off to find out, but it should have a link that they should be able to click on. They'll download that PDF for them and they can see that full report. So, but it does show it's from you. Your name will be in there so they know. All right. So hey, that is, go ahead. Lisa, as you go back to Paragon and looking at the MLS documents, mm -hmm. that first folder, just the plain old education one, is for all of our vendored MLSs, which does not contain all of the ones. So if you go down to the My Real Source folder, oh, I'm so sorry. you'll see those 81 plus another handful. Yes, you're right. I'm so sorry. I always forget because I had to scroll well, yeah, down. For us, that here. that here. folder is so far down because <laughs> we yes. see all the MLSs in there. Right. So this is the one that you want to see. So it'll say My Real Source on it. So this is the one you want. There's 89 in this. So there's more. So this is great. Yep. And I just uploaded the My Real Source member benefits. You'll see I, I post dated it to April 2022 up at the very top sometimes I'll leave the new ones right at the very top like yeah just to show that something's new and then I'll then I'll go down and file it alphabetically yes oh no, that's perfect that is very helpful wonderful and then our videos will be on YouTube so please subscribe to our YouTube if you have not subscribed yet and is there anything I don't see is there any other questions that we missed looks like are we pretty good, Deb, before we move on? Yep, we're good. Okay. Well, I think we are all set. So we did go through a lot. And again, please just play with this because if you go if you go on it tonight in the next couple of days, you'll remember some of the stuff we went through. Um, but you're welcome to mark, come to the classes again. I'm glad you were able to make it today. And hopefully we will see you in person sometime soon. But meanwhile, please come to as many classes as you need. Debbie's great about sending out emails, reminders of classes we have coming up. And uh, if you need help, tech support's always around to help you as well. So thank you everyone for us. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks, Deb, for your help. No problem. Thanks again for teaching Realist, Lisa. We greatly appreciate it. Anytime. Have a good one. Thank you, everyone.